perfect. Yeah, yeah. So, so again, Marcus, it's not anything that anyone else got wrong. It's just that no one's taught Social Circle correctly before ever uh, because they just didn't understand the concept. I host the three biggest bikini competitions in the world, and Bulzarian asks me to bring girls to his events. So I backward rationalized, or I, I reverse engineered what men who were doing really well with women did, and then that's where I came up with these concepts. So one of the things I did is I would ask numerous really, really, really attractive women. I would say, hey, the last five guys you had sex with, I didn't ask them what they were attracted to, because women are clueless when it comes to that. I said, the last five guys you had sex with, where'd you meet them? And they would always go, female friend, female friend, female friend, female friend, Instagram. That's where they would find them. When I asked them about dating apps, really attractive women told me, I only use dating apps in order to get guys to subscribe to my OnlyFans. Again, they would consistently, if fem super hot females would introduce super hot females to each other. My girlfriend, who is a bikini model champion, was introduced to me by two other female bikini model champions. That's how it works. Really attractive females introduce you to really attractive females. Now, going back to what you were saying before, does it allow you to fuck up? You're right, Marcus. The old way that social circle was incorrectly taught, that is correct. That's not the way that I teach it, though, because we, we include so much social media and we put people in situations where we teach them how to break rapport. But the problem is what one of the concepts that's happened is pickup teaches guys that the only way to close is by showing intent and by um, by hitting on a girl. And the reality of the situation is in social circle, so rarely do I ever have to show intent. Women show you intent because of pre-selection that you've established. And again, I have 2,000 people in my group and 600 paying clients right now that will all tell you that this concept works. And almost all of them started as beginners. So I understand where you believe what you believe, and I get it. But the way that social circle was taught previously, that definitely not the way that I teach it. It is not that way whatsoever. You absolutely can take chances. The difference, what we do is we teach compliance loops, compliance loops, which leads, to, uh, uh, there's a couple things. Number one, logistics is so primary to social circle. Logistics. I look to my left, I could throw a football and hit the Aria. I'm on the strip in Las Vegas. Uh, Alex, you live in Brickell. Like we live where the shit is happening. Number one is logistics. Number two is, is social media. This is where pickup got it wrong. I used to have pickup coaches because I used to work for mystery back in like 20, 2008, 2009. I used to work for mystery and matador and them like back in the day but where they got it wrong is that is they wouldn't, they didn't use social media. And I would tell them all the time. I'm like, guys, you've got to start using social media. This is a way for you to show maximum amount of social proof with, a, with showing a minimum amount of effort. And Dan Bilzerian talks about this in chapter two of his book, The Setup, where you show minimal amount of effort with maximum amount of return, okay? And number three, having females that get you invited to cool places that calibrate you and introduce you to other women. This makes your, this puts your game on easy mode. That's why these things are so easy. But the idea that you don't gain a skill set is just incorrect because you have to manage large groups of women to go with you to different things. Those women then compete for you. You take them down a compliance loop and the escalation does not happen until you cross the threshold. And just so you know, Marcus, like, I do teach cold approach stuff in my program. It's just when I teach it, it's one of the deeper things in my program. The majority of my program, 98% is social circle. You do have to do some cold approach in order to meet people uh, face to face. But one of the, the secrets that I teach is when pickup started back in like say 03, there was no real social media. So the distraction of girls always being on their phone wasn't a big issue back when I was doing you know cold approach back in 19 and I'm 45 years old back then. Now it's a huge distraction. So we actually teach cold approach using social media where we actually do what's called a Snapchat open. We get the girls to connect with us on social media. So if they're going to pay attention to the phone, they're going to pay attention to us. And it creates a connection that stays permanently. And then the next thing we do is, hey, do you want to come to this charity event we caught coming up next week? Do you want to come to the bikini competition? Do you want to come to the Maxim party? And because we all share lists, we can all get all these girls into these different events. We have open threads with thousands of women. And that's the reason why this works so well. We use a, use a virtual assistant to do all of this. And it takes, you were saying like six months. I can't imagine doing this six months, 25 days at the most well, uh, is yeah, how long I, it I would take to do something like this. I think it's important we try to stick to like one point that we argue back and forth if we can because sure. I've, I've written down like five things that we can get to um mm -hmm. but uh let, let's start with the first one which was um where are we yeah that essentially everyone you spoke to that was super hot were introduced by a female friend or by social yes. media um mm -hmm. 
I just don't think that is true for the large majority of women. I, I think there's going to be a certain ratio where most people meet in warm spaces, right? Traditionally, before social media, before Tinder, most people met in warm spaces. You'd meet your partner at college, you'd meet at fucking yoga class, wherever you're going. I think that's fairly common that you're going to have like a, a group of friends and you're going to meet people through that and you're going to get introduced and that's fairly common. Um, yeah, but so, a group yeah, of friends, that, that is... That is social circle. Exactly. That a warm so space I, is I do, social circle. Exactly. I'm agreeing with you here, right? So I do okay, think that's very it. normal. I think there's also a large proportion of people that are meeting through dating apps. That's definitely on the rise. I think it's very, very rare for if you just speak to someone to be like, yeah, I met my boyfriend. He came up and approached me in the club or he approached me during the day. Just because most guys don't have the balls to actually do a cold approach. Oh. I think if you go out to the club you basically might see some drunk guys going around being like, hey, you're hot. But to actually go to a club and find someone that has learned cold approach and is applying it and um, and using those techniques, I think is rare. So I'm not surprised at all. I don't think this is the indication that, oh, because this is how the community is meeting each other right now and it's the largest proportion, that this is the best way and this is how we would do it. Um, I, I just don't think that stands. Let me just quickly clarify this because this is kind of my thought I had because I, I agree with both of you. But I think the big thing is that uh, you guys live in totally different parts of the world. So, Michael, what you're saying, I believe, is true in Vegas. And, Marcus, what you're saying, I believe, is true in Europe and Australia. Uh, I do think there's a different culture element that's important to keep in mind. But anyway, oh, do you guys yeah, think? and that's actually that's a good point that I'd, I'd bring up as well. I think there is a selection bias with um, – with social circle games. So uh, depending how you're running it, of course, but with cold approach, I can go out to a library. I can go out to a cafe and meet a certain type of girl. I can go out to a club and meet a certain type of girl. But if I'm an average student, that's maybe looking for a little bit of an introvert, you're not going to find that in social circle. Social circle requires you to find girls that are wanting to go to parties that are wa like wanting to increase their Instagram, that are wanting to meet more people. And then not only that, but then you need to find a girl that's willing to make a move on you, right? Because essentially social circle, a lot of the time what gets taught is not actually showing too much intent, not making the move. It's waiting for the girls to come to you. So now you're selecting for girls that are a little bit more dominant in that space that are actually like going for what they want. Um, so I think that is one of the issues I have with social circle as well for a beginner. Uh, no, I, I don't believe the introvert part. Like the so one of the things you have to understand is because you see the bikini competitions, I throw like 27 different types of events. When I'm doing an animal rescue, like the one I'm doing the day after tomorrow, a lot of the girls that are coming there are there because they want to help rescue animals, not because they're extroverted or because they're trying to grow their social media. But because how do you I find do one that that's wrong. Huh? We find them on social media. We find them on on Instagram. But like what, what you're gonna tell me next is that hot girls aren't on Instagram. No, that's not what I'm going to say. It? I'm going to okay, say that right. this is very much, I mean, we have to be commonsensical here. This is very yeah. much still going to select for girls that are wanting to attend these events through social media. They're getting hit up by guys, right? I think that, and most of these events, to be honest, um, when I've spoken to your students, when I've spoken to other guys doing social circle, it's not animal rescue events, right? Most of them are going to be some photography type thing. It's going to be some modeling type thing. It's going to be connecting people up that way. Um, that's what I've heard. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but that's what I've heard yeah, from the students that's that I've not spoken correct. to yeah. from most people doing social Yeah, so it's, so we do, we do six babes in Toylands a year. Two of them are for domestic abuse. One of them, two of them are for animal rescue. And then we do the model citizen fund, which is we build pack packs for homeless people. We do uh, smash global, which is an anti-bullying charity. The vast majority of my events are for charity. Yeah. So these it's, it's charity events, who are you hitting up? Like if I'm one of your students and you're saying, okay, Marcus, uh, you're running a charity event. Who am I messaging mm -hmm. on Instagram? We're messaging everyone. It just like, we're everyone messaging girls. What do you want? I, I, like when you say What's everyone, I'm just thinking like, what do you mean by everyone? I literally hit up. So, so, so we're, we're not, yeah, we're not, we're not just picking girls that have large social media followings. We're picking girls that are physically attractive. So how do you find and, the physically attractive girls on social media? Beautiful. Dude, great question, man. So that's going to be Thank step you. number two question. in the Men of Action course, if you guys want to check on the free server. Step number two is called build your list. And a couple of things you're going to do. First, you're going to go through a girl that is your perfect archetype, and you're going to look at who she follows. And that's how you're going to build a list. We usually use Google Sheets, and then we're going to have four uh, columns. One is first name, last name, email, and then we do Instagram. On, usually start with the Instagram one. You're going to copy and paste all the Instagrams of people that are like the, the girl that you like. So you're going to look for your archetype. Mm -hmm. It's not. So one of the misconceptions is that 
we go in Vegas and every girl there has big fake tits and they're an escort on OnlyFans. It's not like that at all. We, we find very, like a, a huge spectrum of girls, especially when I do like a charity of all, like for instance, the teddy ball we do in San Diego, the teddy ball, we bring teddy bears for homeless children and for children that are in um, hospice, girls, uh, children that are like in the Make-A-Wish Foundation. We actually collect toys for those children. It's usually super attractive social media influencers that help us raise money and help us collect donations for those things. That's yeah. the majority of my content is what it comes from things like that. That's where you so see me on the microphone. So what? essentially, right, if I'm a guy that wants to get immersed with hot girls, I could just go to these charity events, right? Yes, which is social circle, yes. Yeah, but but I could just go not running any social circle at all, right? Mark, is, Marcus, not only not Marcus, not only could you go. I'm personally inviting you to all no, of them. No, not me. I'll bring not you me. every single one of them. Remember, no, Marcus, remember, I want to get I'm you to come. Eleven Brown guy. I'm a four eleven Brown okay. guy. When I say me, okay, that's um, fine. Because th this is my point. If you're just inviting anyone with any social media following, um, and it's just like some hot girls that you think might want to go, then yeah. essentially, right, all you're doing is setting up a club environment, right? Like, I could just go and get immersed with these hot girls anyway. I don't understand what the question is. My, it's not a question. So if, you're, if you're saying what that I'm, I'm selecting for attractive women, then the answer is yes. I can understand if you're saying, okay, bikini babes competition, and we're just going mm -hmm. and we're really selecting. It has to be someone that's like modeling. It's someone that really wants to get this. They're super hot. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, they have a high social media following. They go into these events. But if you're organizing like a, um, a charity event for dogs, I think you, you mentioned it was. I wasn't familiar. Yeah, it's Animal it. Rescue. It's, it's this Animal Thursday. Rescue. Yeah. Perfect, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you're just inviting like any girl that essentially is into Animal Rescue. Um, then my question is like, what is going to be different than from if I just went to a club with hot girls in it, or I went to a yoga uh, class? Great, great, great question. So, so most clubs don't have a lot of hot girls, and this is a big difference between Europe and the United States. The average woman in the United States is one hundred and seventy-one pounds. We have a severe obesity problem in this country. So we, do, so when you say what do we select for, we select when you're saying do we select for introverted, extroverted, social media, big following, small following, young or old. The only thing we select for is physical attractiveness. So like these are the girls coming to babes in toyland on thursday and like like i have hundreds of girls that have signed up these girls are all there for animal rescue the only thing they have in common is that they were physically attractive and they're there for animal rescue some of them like this girl right here she has a phd in pharmacology she's very introverted but she also happens to be a maxim model so that's the, that's the thing this girl right here is also very introverted she uh she has a master's degree like we, it's not, we don't select for girls based on, do they have a so large social media following? We select for girls. One, are they physically attractive? And two, do they want to help us with Foster Friday Foundation, which helps all the homeless animals that are in Clark County? This is the majority of what I teach as far as- Wait, Michael, are you trying to share your screen right now? Yeah, I'm sorry. Is it not sharing? No, you got to give me a heads up. Yeah, I can- Oh, sorry, I my can... bad. No, you're good. You're good. Yeah, I can, cool. if you want to bring it back, I can add it to the stream. Yeah, I got you. see right there? Right yeah, yeah, you're good now. Yeah. So like these, these girls that are coming to the Foster Friday Foundation situation, this is the charity that we're doing on Thursday. Right. And it's, uh, some of them are older. Some of them are younger. Some of them have regular professions. Like I said, we have one girl with a PhD in pharmacology and another girl who does OnlyFans. Like it doesn't make any difference. We're just inviting, we're creating a situation to where there's two or three really attractive girls for every guy in these situations. That's what my events end up becoming. Right. This girl has uh, she's a, a marriage and a family therapist. Like a lot of these girls are Maxim models and a lot of these girls are just regular girls that wanted to come help us raise money for animal rescue. But the point is, and then this, obviously this is my girlfriend. The point of this whole situation is, the point of the entire situation is that we wanted to create a situation where there's a massive ratio of girls compared to guys, which allows it, makes it easier for you. The setup, that's what, again, uh, that's what we try to create is a setup to where you have, again, if you want to get better at basketball, you play in the NBA. You don't play in the G League. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I, no, you don't. Hang on, hang on. Sorry, sorry, sorry. If I am a beginner to basketball and I'm an average sure. guy, I'm not going to yes. learn shit in the NBA. I'm going no, go to go to the would, NBA. But, but you, you can, no, but you can train and you can get better with better competition. I, so the, you and I are going to disagree on, on this because I can just Damn. show you ultimate examples. If I throw a guy in to the deep end with really attractive women, I can make him better with really attractive women. The reason why Pickup has never been able to teach this is because Pickup does not give you access to the Playboy Mansion or backstage at the Maxim Party. If you do that on a regular basis, you'll find that those dudes are just better with attractive women Yo, because they're I, more I regularly you, around attractive women. I guarantee you. If you take Let's put some money on it. If you money take on it. Let's do it. Let's do some money on it. Let's pick a guy. 
yo, yo, let me finish. If you take a below average guy and just throw him around hot women, he's not going to learn to get good with hot women. Like you, you Correct. gave the analogy of the NBA example, right? If you just mm -hmm. throw me in the NBA and are like, go for it, I'm never going to learn shit. If I actually am a beginner to basketball and I want to learn, then what I should do is start off at the beginner level, have a really good coach teaching me the foundational skills, having the ability mm -hmm. to fuck up. Now, if I go to the NBA and you give me the ball to make a shot, right? There's so much pressure there. I'm just going to do the shot that I'm always used to. I'm not going to practice what my coach told me, which might have been instead of throwing the ball fucking underarm because I don't know what I'm doing is actually like add a little bit of a flick to it, which I'd never try in the NBA, right? I, I'll just do what I'm used to. So yeah. cold approach actually allows you that ability to fuck up, to practice, to learn, to get better. But if you put me in a party with a bunch of 500 hot girls and I'm an average or below average guy, then I'm going to be so worried about fucking it up, especially if these are the girls that are going to be at the same parties over and over again, right? That's something I'm really going to be worried about. I'm not going to be able to take my shot or practice anything new. So I think the idea of like putting someone in the NBA when they're a beginner is crazy. I wouldn't do it. Yeah. Okay. So then you don't like the NBA analogy. The analogy would be to take them to Babes in Toyland in Miami, where they're around a lot of very beautiful women and all of them come up to me and be like, this was an incredible experience and I, and I learned a lot. Okay, so if I just take... Maybe, maybe we won't use analogy, just we'll take, just use specifics. No, no, let's use specifics. So if yeah. I give you one of my students, right? He's just come mm -hmm. to me last week. His name is Bob. We're going back to Bob, the okay. <laughs> four, foot 11 or whatever, you know, normal height um, guy that's horrible with women and you throw him in this party. Like what, what is going to happen? What, what is he going to yeah. do? How is he going to learn? Beautiful. So, so he would start at the beginning of the course. Was step number one, we go over breaks and rapport. So we go over ways. We make them uh, talk about themselves. We treat them all the same, make them talk about themselves. These are concepts that we have. And we also have the concept of value arbitrage, connector, suggester, and content creator. Connector in order to build connections. And then we also go over logistical questions. There's a bunch of stuff that where we actually do teach guys how to talk to women in these situations and then build connections and then group big groups of girls, one group of girl with another group of girls, and we're connecting them together. So one of the main things that creates attraction from a guy who is very average is the ability to create pre-selection. So one of the things is I usually have my guys show up with six or seven girls whenever they come to these parties. And that is something I can teach a beginner. That is Look, absolutely. Marcus, $10,000 right now. I'm sorry. $10,000. $10,000. might be very different because I guarantee you, I guarantee you every guy in pickup that is a beginner that would go to this party, would, they mm -hmm. would have so much negative pre-selection, it would be crazy, okay? No, but that's but, but that's because we teach them, right? We teach them how to show up with girls. You, Marcus, you're, you're maybe you can give a, an example of what a beginner looks like to you because you guys yeah. might be defining it differently. Yeah, so a beginner to me is someone that's a little bit, I mean, awkward around women, right? So if I put mm -hmm. him in front of a girl and they had a 20-minute conversation, that girl at the end of it, if I went and got feedback, would say, yeah, look, this guy seems very shy. He doesn't seem sure of himself. Um, the conversation didn't really flow. Um, it just felt a bit awkward, right? Like sure. that's how a girl would describe them. Now, if you want like traits from the guys, I mean, Alex, I mean, it, we you've done a lot of speed dating on this channel, right? Like, I think if you take the average guy from there, right? Look at the feedback that he's getting. Look at the type of uh, traits that he has. I think you could, you know, if you want to use well, that. Let's, let's, take, let's, guy, let's, right? let's take a beginner guy. So what is with a speeding, what a beginner guy looks like, it's either like 30 seconds in, he says, I can't do this anymore. Sure. And I have to like come in and give him like a mini therapy session because uh, he's on the verge of like having a panic attack. Or he says something really weird and cringy that creeps the girl out. And that's like totally not calibrated. Like, so, um, hmm, do the tits match the, the, the sweater? Like some weird shit that makes no sense. Uh, that's what a beginner would look like. Uh, and I would say a uh, vast majority of people who do my speed dates are either beginners or intermediates. It's very, very rare that I see someone who's competent and can actually like do well. It's maybe 10% of the time, but yeah.